The opening scene introduces us to Sudi, a rich and powerful industrialist who has a knack for shooting. With every shot he takes, Sudi leaves the onlookers in awe of his flawless technique. But when his business partner Adithir reminds him of their upcoming meeting, Sudi seems to be lost in his own world. Despite Adithya's warning about their client's high standards, Sudip chooses to brush him off and instead sets his sights on a young woman on the other side of the field. Looks like Sudip's aiming for a different kind of target now. With a seductive smile, he takes it upon himself to teach her how to shoot like a pro. It's clear that Sudip is a man who always gets what he wants, even if it means neglecting his responsibility. In a cozy little corner, Bendu, a talented miniature artist, works tirelessly on her latest creation, a tiny heart but something just doesn't feel right about it. When the power cuts out, Bendu decides to take matters into her own hands and moves her setup to the window. The moonlight casts a mesmerizing glow, and she can't resist the temptation to perfect her work. Next door, Nanny, a love-struck neighbor who has been pining after Bendu for two whole years, notices her struggling to see in the dark. With sheer determination, he fashions a makeshift light bulb out of aluminum foil and a torchlight. Bendu is overjoyed by his act of kindness, and manages to finish her masterpiece with ease. After the work is done, Bendu simply closes her window and heads to bed. Her neighbor Nanny, who helped her earlier, is left feeling hurt and unappreciated. Yet that's what happens when you loves a girl. Left feeling hurt. But Nanny, hopelessly in love, refuses to see it that way. He believes that by closing the window, Bendu was actually doing him a favor, sparing him from waiting outside her window all night. The next day, Sudip throws a lavish party to celebrate his company's third anniversary. Everything seems to be going well until he receives an unexpected gift from a client who has been causing him a lot of trouble lately. Aditya is shocked to see that the client's wife is none other than the woman Sudip had been flirting with at the gun range. Suddenly, things become a lot more complicated. After successfully closing a deal using his client's wife, Sudip and his business partner head to the bar to celebrate. As they down their drinks, the conversation takes an unexpected turn. We discover that Sudip's immense wealth is actually the result of a sinister act. He killed his own wife a few years back and took over her business. It's clear that Sudip's morals are a little murky, to say the least. Meanwhile, in another part of town, Bendu not only excels as a miniature artist, but she also runs an and go called Project 551, which helps promote children's education. Her goal is to provide education to underprivileged children and also ignoring his boyfriend. But the organization is struggling with a lack of funding. Bendu is approached by her sister-in-law who suggests that she arrange a meeting with Sudip's company, which is looking to support a non-profit organization. I guess it is only to cover up his fraud money. I mean, we are talking about Sudip, who killed his wife for money. Eager to secure funding for her NGO, Bendu meets with Sudip in his office. As soon as Sudip sets his eyes on her, he is immediately smitten by her beauty. Despite Bendu's best efforts to explain her organization's charitable deeds, Sudip is too distracted by his attraction to her. However, at the end of the meeting, Sudip surprises Bendu by handing her a check for a staggering 150,000 rupee. Bendu is taken aback by his generosity, but is unaware of his true intentions. A few days later, Bendu and her team would distribute books and stationery to underprivileged students in their neighborhood, grateful for the much-needed funding from Sudip's company. Following the successful program, Sudip invites Bendu to join him for lunch at a luxurious restaurant. As they peruse the menu, Bendu receives a text from Nanny, complimenting her stunning looks. She glances around the restaurant and locks eyes with Nanny, who's working on the other side of the room. Sudip notices her gaze shift, and he becomes increasingly jealous as Bendu seems entirely engrossed in Nanny. The meal comes to an end, and Sudip offers to drive her home, but she makes an excuse about needing to buy groceries. As she walks away, Sudip follows her, watching as she meets up with Nanny. The sight of the two together only intensifies his rage and jealousy. No woman has ever dared to ignore him like that, and he's determined to drive a wedge between Bendu and Nanny. A perfect villain ridge in story. It was a typical work night for Bendu until she lost track of time and found herself working late. As the night wore on, she started to feel uneasy about walking home alone and decided to send Nanny a blank text as a signal for help. Nanny, being the reliable friend he is, quickly rushed to her aid. They too walked home in complete silence, but Bendu was grateful for his company. However, their peaceful moment was short-lived when a white van suddenly appeared and snatched Nanny away. Sudip had hired these goons to remove Nanny from her life. They took him to an abandoned house where they brutally beat him, and to make matters worse, Sudip himself showed up to inflict more pain on Nanny. As soon as Nanny discovered that Sudip was beating him for Bendu's sake, his fighting spirit ignited within him. 
He warned Sudip that anyone who dared to harm Bendu would face the dire consequences of his wrath. But unfortunately, this only added fuel to the already raging fire of Sudip's anger. In a fit of blind rage, Sudip unleashed his fury upon Nani until he lay lifeless on the ground. Talk about miserable life. While the dust settled, Bendu called Nani's phone to express her love. Oh now, you woke up dear. But it was too late. Little did anyone know, as Nani's body lay on the ground, his corpse began to emit an eerie blue glow. The glow soon transferred to a nearby fly's egg. The next morning, Nani's body was found in the middle of the street, and the police deemed it an accident. Bendu watched in devastation as Nani's corpse was taken away in an ambulance. Exactly ten days after Nani's tragic death, a peculiar event occurred. The egg that was struck by the mysterious blue light began to crack, and out came a tiny, wriggly creature. It was a fly, but not just any fly. As it turned out, it was Nanny, reborn into the world as an insect. Now, I can assure you that even God don't like you bro. I mean, really, a fly. A fucking fly. At first, the fly had no recollection of its past life and struggled to fly, its wings stuck to its fragile body. In a desperate attempt to break free, Nanny almost lost its life to a nearby stream but managed to spread its wings and soar into the sky. The world was a different place from the vantage point of a fly, and Nanny was amazed by the floating bubbles and children playing around. Excitedly, the fly started popping the bubbles, but its curiosity got the better of it, and Nanny found itself stuck to a cricket ball, finally landing on a half-eaten apple. Then came a dangerous turn when a bird began to chase it, and it flew into a nearby house for safety. However, fate had other plans for the insect. In a moment of pure carelessness, a human inadvertently drowned the fly in a mug of water. The fly could sense the man's face and recognized him as Sudi, the very person responsible for its previous human life's untimely end. Yeah God hates you. A rush of anger in memories flooded through the fly's tiny mind, and it emerged from the water, attacking Sudip with all its might. However, as a fly, it had no significant power to hurt its enemy, and with a swift wave of his hand, Sudip sent Nanny hurtling to the ground. Suddenly, memories of Bendu flooded back, and the fly knew it had to find a way to protect her. So, it flapped its wings and headed towards Bendu's house, determined to keep her safe, even if it meant doing so as a tiny fly. He finally catches a glimpse of her, and is overcome with emotion. He tries to get her attention, but he is just a little fly and Bendu doesn't even look at him. She then talks to her sister-in-law about Nanny and shares how much she misses him. After hearing this, the fly becomes determined to capture her attention. When she is in her office later that day, Sudip arrives to meet her. He tries to tell her how sorry he is about Nanny's death, hoping to get close to her. In an effort to get him away while still trying to defend Bendu, the fly gets inside his ear. The next scene shows Sudip entering a wooden steam room. The fly makes his move once his limbs are restrained and enters his ears. This causes the box to move. The movement of the box nearly causes Sudip to hit a sharp shower handle. He disgracefully exposes himself in front of his clients and business associates as he runs outside naked in an effort to kill the fly. In order to help their business, Sudip asks Bendu to go to Delhi with him later while he is still at work. They decide they will leave the next day. Sudip struggles to get a good night's sleep because the flies prevent them from flying away. He is bothered by the fly for hours, but it prevents him from getting even a few minutes of sleep. After wrapping himself in the bedsheet, Sudip finally nods off for a short while. Bendu contacts Sudip to inform him that they have only 30 minutes before they must board the flight. He quickly rushes to the airport, with Nanny in tow. On the way, the fly irritates the traffic policeman, making him wave his hands around erratically and causing a traffic jam. When Sudip switches vehicles, the fly dives into his eye, resulting in an accident. While Sudip is stuck in the car seat, the fly leaves a message on the glass with dust, I will kill you. That's an interval bang I am looking for in any movie. After the man is rescued, he is filled with fear that the fly will come for him. Hence, he is always armed with fly spray for protection. Sudip remains steadfast, despite the belief of those around him that he has gone insane. During a visit from Bendu, the fly becomes agitated and attempts to attack Sudip once again. Fortunately, Bendu uses fly repellent to defend him causing the fly to plummet out of the window and land on a nearby bush. Bro, the only reason your life is so messed up is that lady. Leave her, and you will become the president of insects one day, I'm sure. Though the fly is on the brink of death, a timely spray from a water sprinkler washes away the toxin on its body. Sudip seeks the advice of an entomologist regarding whether flies can hold grudges, but the doctor dismisses his concerns as delusional and advises him to take a break. Despite this, Sudip remains unconvinced and travels to the dump site where his car was brought after the accident. At the dump site, Sudip encounters a peculiar man who warns him that his riches are at risk of going up in flames. 
Dismissing the stranger's words, Sudip sifts through the debris and discovers a shard of glass with the word kill etched onto it. With this finding, Sudip becomes convinced that the fly had indeed been attempting to murder him. The following day, Nani observes Bendu crying and reflecting on his passing. In a touching moment, Nani uses Bendu's tears to write her a message on the table. Bendu is taken aback when she reads it, and she cradles him in her hand, questioning whether he is really Nani. The fly nods, affirming that he has been reborn. Now she sees him as a pet, which is even worse than before. Sorry guys, I will continue. The fly proceeds to reveal that Sudip had murdered him in an attempt to win Bendu's affections, leaving her stunned. Convinced of the fly's accusations, Bendu vows to aid him in seeking retribution against Sudip. Her talent as a miniature artist proves advantageous, as she is able to craft miniature glasses to shield the fly from insect repellent spray. Sudip instructs his bodyguards to search for the fly, but their efforts prove futile. Furthermore, he discovers that insect repellents are ineffective against his adversary. Determined to eliminate the fly, Sudip attempts a variety of methods, including fly baits and swatters, yet none of them prove successful in exterminating the persistent pest. Nanny successfully sets Sudip's bed on fire and forces him to ingest fly bait while also preventing him from sleeping at night. However, Nanny realizes that he must take drastic measures to achieve his ultimate goal of killing Sudip. As such, he fills a functional cannon display with gunpowder and plans to ignite it at the opportune moment. In the following days, Bendu assists Nanny by preparing a small bucket of gunpowder for him to drop into the cannon. They repeat the process several times, carefully filling the cannon with gunpowder. Unfortunately, their efforts are thwarted when a man unwittingly places tissue paper in the cannon's muzzle, causing the plan to fail. Undeterred, Sudip takes action to fortify his residence against the persistent fly, renovating his home with insect-proof glass and implementing advanced scanners to prevent the fly from entering. Hashtag money matters. As a result, Bendu must personally escort Nanny into Sudip's home by unscrewing a screw from the window. However, Sudip takes advantage of the situation and attempts to make inappropriate advances towards Bendu. Again, bloody pervert. A fucking fly wants to kill you. Think about that first. The fly intervenes, utilizing its modified claws to dig into Sudip's skin and force him to back off. The following day, Sudip is scheduled to meet with a group of investors who are considering funding his latest project. Due to his sleep deprivation and phobia of flies, Sudip becomes disoriented and begins to ramble about fly repellent sprays during his presentation. To make matters worse, Nanny lands on an investor's head, causing Sudip to panic and accidentally dump a pot of soil on the individual. As a result of the failed meeting, the investors decide not to fund Sudip's project, leaving him and his company in a state of debt. Shortly after, the income tax officers receive a tip-off regarding the black money that Sudip has stashed in his office. Desperate to save his assets, Sudip attempts to move the money elsewhere, but the fly intervenes, causing the money to go up in flames and leaving him with little to no funds. Sudip recalls the stranger he encountered at the dumping site who warned him of his impending wealth loss. He seeks out the man and discovers he is an adept in the dark arts called Tantra. With the assistance of Tantra, Sudip discovers that Nanny, the fly, has come back to seek revenge. Why is Tantra helping Sudip? I have no idea. Okay, moving on. To capture Nanny, they create two malevolent birds through a ritual, but Nanny kills both of them while trying to escape from the house. During the chaos, one of the birds collides with electrical sockets, causing the glass doors to lock and fill the house with smoke. In a panic situation, Sudip pushes Tantra, which causes death. Lesson learned, don't solve problems when it is not yours. Sudip was trapped in the smoke-filled house until Aditya comes to rescue them. Upon reviewing the CCTV footage, Sudip discovers that Bendu allowed the fly to enter the house. Armed with this knowledge, he takes Bendu captive and demands that Nanny reveal himself. To rescue Bendu, Nanny surrenders and shows up in front of Sudip. During the ensuing scuffle, Bendu manages to slip away as the fly diverts Sudip's attention. But Sudip finally traps it using a magnet. He discovers Bendu hiding in a corner and takes her hostage once more. Mocking both of them, he amputates the fly's wing. At that moment, Nanny realizes that the paper ball obstructing the cannon has dislodged, indicating that the cannon can fire once more. The fly, with its final effort, covers itself in gunpowder, leaps through a burning match flame, and enters the cannon already filled with gunpowder. The shot goes through Sudip's heart. The projectile from the cannon also strikes an oxygen cylinder, resulting in a massive explosion that engulfs Sudip's home in flames. For the first time in my life, I felt sorry for a fly. And you know what makes me more sad and angry. That lady didn't die even though the whole house is blown away. She's still there without a scratch. I suspect she is a devil. After a few days, Bendu is shown driving to work when she is called by a man. 
Suddenly, Nanny, who has once again been reborn as a fly, attacks the man with a needle and declares his return. Oh my god, please, die dude and don't be reborn again. Put yourself out of messery. Please. And that's a wrap for today's episode of Cinematic Chronicles. We hope you enjoyed our journey through the story of this film. If you did, be sure to hit the like button and leave a comment below. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more movie narrations. Until next time, this is Cinematic Chronicles signing off.